To gain some background information on tuberculosis, we spoke to Dr. Tamoyanovich Berubi from the School of Interdisciplinary Science. So tuberculosis is a disease of typically of the lungs, um, but it can be reflected through several organ systems, and it's caused by a group of bacteria known as mycobacteria. So mycobacteria is known for two things. It's either known for tuberculosis or it's known for leprosy. So there's two different sort of species associated with those two different diseases. Mycobacteria and tuberculosis and other uh, mycobacteria that fall into sort of this cluster called the mycobacterium complex um, are a series of bacteria all within the same sort of family that, um, that can cause um, tuberculosis, which is a disease of the typically the lungs, as I mentioned, um, and is defined by the formation of these tubercles or granulomas within the lungs. Um, the bacteria themselves kind of fall into their own special category. Um, they are um, they are slow growing bacteria, and they've actually they are the oldest known infectious disease in human history. So we've known about tuberculosis for as long as I think history has been writing itself. Um, and it has been with us. It is a human-specific pathogen, although there are tuberculosis um, variants within other organisms. Uh, but it is, it is as part, much of a part of us as um, our own cells in terms of our sort of health history. Two, when people become infected, they don't necessarily um, present symptoms. And so you can be carrying tuberculosis without actually knowing that you are carrying it. Um, and so, uh, and also the symptoms associated with active tuberculosis, um, the ones that come to mind easily are, you know, coughing for longer periods of time, let's say more than three weeks, uh, blood in the sputum, uh, lethargy, weakness, weight loss, um, these are all sort of common symptoms to other infectious diseases and so oftentimes the first clues may not necessarily lead someone to TB. So they may be carrying an active infection, not realize they're active and be spreading their germs essentially to others, um, which can then lead to more and more dissemination of the bacteria. Uh, people can have sort of there are two forms of tuberculosis you have latent tuberculosis which is almost like a dormant state and then you have active tuberculosis which is a disease state the latent state means that you're a carrier of the bacteria you carry it in your body but you are not infectious um, and you will not um, cause anyone to be sick uh, and you don't show any symptoms at all so it's like nothing is going on with you um, but that's a, within the population of those who uh, carry latent tuberculosis. About 5 to 10% um, have the risk of it converting or reactivating into active tuberculosis. Um, and it can happen at any time during anyone's lifetime. And once uh, someone has active tuberculosis, that's when they are infectious, that's when they can spread um, the bacteria and because the infectious dose is so low it's quite easy to transmit through basic sputum sort of like spit as you're coughing. One is that it is not your average bacteria so it has a different surface structure or cell wall than most other bacteria that we encounter on a regular basis which means that a, a large proportion of the antibiotics that we normally use to treat infection are not effective against it. Uh, so that kind of limits our pool of drugs that we have available. Two, um, it is an extremely slow growing bacteria. So once it gets inside the body, it um, becomes engulfed by macrophages, which are immune cells that are kind of the first defense, first line defense. Um, and so it can take, it takes I think somewhere along the lines of 20 hours even just for a single sub cell division. So um, for screening purposes, when we, when we evaluate someone for an infection, we usually have to culture the bacteria. But to culture mycobacterium, or TB, it can take weeks. And so even just to grow it on a plate. Um, and so the, the screening procedure for, for establishing, one, whether or not you have uh, TB, or two, what kind of TB you have, 
is quite extensive, or at least it used to be, which has limitations in terms of treatment. Um, so because it's kind of a bacteria off on its own in terms of its structure, um, we have sort of a small subset of drugs that actually work. And within that subset, we have two that are the most effective. So they're what you call your first line of defense for antibiotics. And that includes rifampicin and isoniazid. If you would like to learn more about the problem of antibiotic resistance and tuberculosis treatment, please watch the second part of this video.